Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking about Solar Auxilia troop and transport choices in Horus Heresy, the Age of Darkness. We're going to be looking at the Auxilia Infantry Tertio, which is the single most core unit in the Solar Auxilia Army. We're going to be looking at the rifle sections and the line command sections that make up that Tertio. We're going to look at the transports as well, and then I'm going to give you some recommended builds for how to use those in your armies too. But before we do that, if you do enjoy the content, please do like and subscribe. Leave me any feedback you've got in the video below as well. And please do check out the Heresy Discord community, which you can find linked in the description too. And now on with the show. So the single most important and ubiquitous choice in the Solar Auxiliar Army is the Auxiliar Infantry Tertio. It's the only troop choice in the army by default, unless you're taking some cohorts, and it's your main source of line as well. In this Tertio, you can take 0-1 line command section and 1-3 to auxiliar rifle sections as well. They've got a human stat line, so threes across the board, pretty much one wound, and they've got a 4 plus save, which isn't bad. They were pretty good, pretty good armor, void armor, and leadership 6 as well or seven for the sergeant so most of the units are leadership seven most of the time as i mentioned they are line and you can get a lot of these in your army because they're not very expensive and they have the close order subtype which we talked about in the previous video which basically means they only have one inch coherency but they can move half distance fire heavy weapons and still charge which really defines their play style quite a lot the rifle section which makes up the majority of that tertio is 60 points for 10 models, which when you compare it to 10 Space Marines for 100 points doesn't necessarily look that good. You know, the Space Marines are WS and BS4, Strength and Toughness 4, and other points of leadership. You know, they're just generally a lot better, especially when you factor in power armor as well. But one thing that is hard to quantify in points terms is the value of a wound. You know, ultimately one gun still only kills one model. And if those models are cheaper, even though, you know, not cheaper by percentage points compared to their stats, the value of a wound can be quite high. The easiest way to explain this is if you put 300 rifle section models on the board, even though they are worse per point per model than Space Marine tactical squads would be, they are significantly more difficult to kill just because there isn't enough time in the game necessarily to go through that number of models. So... 60 points for 10 models with this stat line is actually pretty fine. And, you know, one of the mistakes Games Workshop have made in the past in other games is making, you know, chaff profile models too cheap because the value of their wound is too high. They've done this in 40k a number of times over the years. So I think this is quite a good points value without sort of making these completely broken. Now, where they do gain some ground back is their LAS rifle. It's a 30-inch range weapon, strength 3, AP 6, heavy 2. So remember, they got that close order subtype, so they can still move three inches and fire this weapon. But it's got a 30-inch range. Now, Space Marines normally, only normally get their second shot at 12 inches. So it's a lot longer range than that while still getting their two shots in, even though it's one less strength. Getting the two shots will still compensate for that. So at its basic normal profile level, it's pretty good. But it's also got an extra profile as well, which is an 18-inch range, strength 6 AP4 heavy one profile now having 10 strength six shots out of a 60 point chaff unit is pretty bonkers in a lot of ways really if you're shooting at space marines you're wounding them on a two you know this is effectively like having shorter range volkite culverins you know or volkite weapons you know it's a very high strength one and you're wounded on a two you can suddenly start doing a lot of damage to space marines you can shoot at things like dreadnoughts and just you know that you wound them on a five so although they're still going to get their save, massed firepower of high strength really does improve the odds of things going through. And this can even kill very easily things like javelins, which are normally quite tough to kill. You've got the strength to ignore their biggest defense, which is their toughness. If you get to the side or behind a vehicle like a predator or a rhino, these can take out vehicles, which is pretty crazy for a, a, an infantry gun on a chaff model. All over, this is really good. And that takes that 60 points for 10 chaff models, which is like an okay thing you might put in your army to give you some men on the board into actually being pretty dangerous, especially when you combine these with the tercio rules, where the whole tercio can return fire if shot at. Imagine trying to shoot at 30 to 60 of these guys within 18 inches. Whatever shooting at them is going to take a lot of firepower back 
really, really does some damage. Just excellent shooting potential for the cost, really. And you can boost it further with the cohorts as well. The Ultramar cohort will give you plus one to hit if they don't move. The Reborn cohort will let you reroll ones, which is great. Extra bodies that these guys can take as well for five points each is also a great option. So any unit size for these 10 to 20 models is all completely viable. You know, the bigger your unit gets, the more firepower you get in your tertio reactions, which makes them harder to shoot at and if you do get larger you get some drawbacks though you know obviously you're going to be more men massed in the same place for blasts and flame weapons and that kind of thing and maybe more susceptible to breaking or failing a leadership test as well so it, it's a it's a trade-off but i think any size of unit is fine anywhere between 10 and 20 you can make arguments it's all just trade-off but the individual bodies become five points at that point is is just good i think i prefer large units in the reborn cohort because at that point they're stubborn they've potentially got leadership 11 stubborn as well so you can have the uh the the general of the army use leadership 10 in a unit with a command vox plus one leadership from reborn cohort makes them 11 and stubborn as well so those guys are never breaking so the main disadvantage of going to 20 outside of course of being flamed to death is is gone so pretty good option there as well and however big you want to run these squads you can do that quite happily now in terms of equipment options for them they can take a vox interlock which is five points and it lets them use the com any command value from any squad with a command vox so that will normally be your command units which have got leadership nine or ten plus one if they're reborn cohort as well you should pretty much always take this. And if you're going to take an infantry heavy army or even not an infantry heavy army, just an army with infantry in, taking those command squads and using the sort of chain of voxes is, is a thing you should almost certainly do, I would say. For me, I would always do it. So that's only five points for these guys as well, which is pretty good. Most of the other equipment they've got, though, is too expensive. They don't have access to any special weapons or anything like that. They have a few pistol options they can take, which are downgrades to the LAS rifle, really. But if you want to take them for cool, on this fact that you can they're only a couple of points each they're probably not materially going to have a huge impact on your army if you want to make your sergeants look a bit cool so fire away but they're certainly not good upgrades the augury scanner though that they can take is five points and if you are in bigger units particularly where you sort of go 15 up to 20 men spending five points to get augury scanner shots from that many men becomes worth it because you get a lot of interceptor i think if you're paying five points for every 10 men in your army and giving them all augury scanners it's probably a bit expensive but on bigger units it's certainly good a couple of augury scanners dotted around your army to stop infiltrators infiltrating as well is obviously a thing that you can do just to use in deployment and then not care about them much anymore the auxilia vexel is pretty good as well if you're using reborn cohort you probably don't need it but again if you've got large units these are only five points each you want a little bit of extra break and fall back protection on your units you could certainly do worse than spend them five points on this i probably wouldn't but you know it's certainly an option and again if you want to make some of these units particularly if you're taking a lot of them you want to make them stand out or look a bit different and you want to pay points for a guy with a banner it'll look pretty cool bayonets is another option now i would only consider these on the penal cohort because the penal cohorts have got furious charge and they want to be close range and if that is an army that you're going to do you might as well have a bayonet on the men as well for one point each that makes them strength five when charging which is pretty good really with a volume of attacks not the kind of army i would be building but just to throw in there it's worth considering if that is a thing you're doing in summary these units are fairly cheap per model with really good firepower for what you're paying for them and you know on mass i mean even not on mass they're good for what you're paying but on mass they can become a real real threat with that tertio rule return and fire particularly although it's only going to be one to ten if you've got 30 to 60 men maybe your enemy shoots them and you return fire it's going to be really painful for your enemy shooting at them you know your enemy can maybe play around the strength six by staying at range and shooting them with heavy weapons that won't take too much damage in return but it does force them to do that the other good thing about return and fire in a tear show as well is your opponent only gets to shoot at one unit so if you've got three units of 10 and they shoot at that tear show they can still only kill 10 guys they can still only shoot one unit but your return and fire with 30 just generally a really good rule and getting your rifle sections to be big enough to be scary and return fire without being so big that you make them mega vulnerable to you know flamers and that kind of thing is, uh, is certainly a thing that you'll want to factor in when building these units. Now, the other option in the tertio is the line command section. Zero to one of these, so you don't have to take one. 
They're 65 points for five models, which is pretty expensive. You know, it's more than double the cost of the rifle section for models that are effectively the same. The base troops are veterans, so they got plus one attack which we pretty much don't care about because they're just terrible in melee anyway. And the troop master who leads the unit's got two wounds. But effectively, these are twice the points for the same um, the same model count, which is not very good at all. Or alternatively, slightly more expensive for half the models, depending on how you look at it. Equipment-wise, they do have some, some changes, some slight changes. So they take a command vox rather than a vox interlock. Now, they can transfer their leadership to their troops with this, but these guys have got the same leadership as the troops they're leading. So this is effectively pointless. It does mean they can still get the leadership from their superiors in the HQ squads. But well, this is 10 points. So whereas the 10-man squad pays 5 points for the same functionality, these guys pay 10. I suspect at some point these may have had higher leadership or it was intended that they would have higher leadership. But right now, they don't really lead their section at all. They're just more expensive for the same thing. The Troop Master can take Melter Bombs, but it's one guy with Melter Bombs for 5 points, which is maybe not great, although maybe something you'll take sometimes. And he can also take a Refractor Field, which again is not great but maybe something you will take sometimes. Other than that, that, though, the equipment is the same as the rifle section, and much like the rifle section, not really worth taking. So what is the point of this command section? Well, it's more expensive than the rifle section for half the troops. No real benefits because they don't have any more leadership. They don't have any you know extra weapon options, like special weapons or anything like that. And it seems to me like at this you at some point in playtesting or design, this line command section might have done more. But right now it's just pointless. There's no reason to take this whatsoever. The only reason to do it would be to have a slightly different cool looking unit leading the army. But look, if we're going to do that, let's have a reason to put them on the board mechanically as well. It's just Bad writing, unfortunately. Getting shades of the Mechanicum book here where you're looking at something and you're saying, you know, it looks like someone had an idea for this and then just didn't follow through with it or something. It's a, it's a little bit of a shame, really, but, you know, you only have to take zero of these as well. I would have preferred that you had to take one of these to command the section and that they actually did something different or just that they were like 35 points or 65 points for 10, you know, 110 points for 10 of them or something. and just make them not just strictly worse rifle sections. But either way, unless you want to do it for coolness factor or you want to, you know, do something special with these, which you could equally just do with the HQ units that we'll discuss in another episode anyway, you could do worse than just pretending these aren't there. They're that bad unfortunately. So with the infantry discussed, let's have a look at the transport options. So first we've got the Dracosan Armoured Transport, which is a super cool looking tank that drives men around in it. It's 175 points, move 12, 13, 12, 11 armour, so effectively a predator really, five hit points. It's got 22 capacity for transport though, which is pretty big, and it is reinforced like a land raider, so it's harder to slow it down and stop it getting its troops to where they need to be. It comes with a Gravis last cannon, so two shots, although it's at BS3 and a searchlight as standard as well. Now, notable equipment options for this. It's got some pintle weapons, which are kind of pointless. It can get a flare shield for 25 points, so that makes it, you know, um, a land raider from the front at least, but, you know, 200 points. Dozer blade for five points as standard on a lot of vehicles, which is, you know, very often worth taking on transports. And it can take a demolisher cannon for 50 points. Demolisher cannons in this edition are pointed incredibly incorrectly. You know, for some reason, probably because they were great, in the previous version of Heresy, if you paid that, they've paid the price and across the board, every model that can take them anywhere in the game is just paying an insane amount of points for a weapon that is good, but just way too expensive and you're never going to take this. The only reason I'm calling it out is to point out that you really don't want to use it unless you just want it for cool factor again. Pretty expensive model this for what it is. It is the only way to carry a 20-man squad into battle, though. And like most things, like a Spartan, they've got very high transport capacity. You pay some kind of points premium to get access to that. Now, with a Spartan, it's kind of okay because the thing's 15 armor and brings a, a pile of BS4 LAS cannons with it, even though it's quite expensive. And the things a Spartan is carrying are normally very elite melee troops, command squads, you know, praetors, that kind of thing. This is carrying humans. And even if it was to be carrying elite humans, which we're not discussing in this episode, they're still not that elite. You know, they're still not that good. And I think this needed to be pointed, thinking about the things that are going to be in it, as well as the fact that carrying 20 men in an armor 13, maybe 14 for 200 points transport, 
is also a bit more risky than a, a, an armor 15 spartan as well i think this unit just doesn't really work with the cost for what you get out of it and also the fact that it's a last cannon is bs3 as well so it's probably you know to the order of 50 points overpriced this certainly 25 35 points overpriced given that you'd mostly be running a tear show of three units as well a lot of the time you'd need to take three of these to move the squads you know otherwise you might as well just take something smaller you know the only reason to run these is to move big amounts of troops around you don't want to run tear shows of one unit you want to run them in three units to get advantage of the tear show rules so that's 600 points of dracosans just to move 360 points of infantry around with large rifles which are great but not that great it's just very difficult to see how these fit into any cohesive plan and they're certainly hugely points inefficient so unfortunately i think these are too expensive to reasonably use it in any way that makes sense right now and they they could certainly do with some changes uh before putting them on the battlefield and i think you know this type of unit is cool but you will likely be punished with a game you don't enjoy when your opponent just blows them all up and your stuff doesn't work that's the problem with units like this. You don't even get the enjoyment out of running them for cool factor. So maybe best to avoid these until hopefully we see some changes in the future. On the other hand, though, we have the lovely cheap and cheerful Aurox Transport. It's 30 points. Move 15, 11, 11, 10 armor, three hit points and a capacity 10. So it's ultimately a slightly cheaper, slightly faster by one inch. Ballistic skill 3 Rhino. It doesn't have the repair ability and it doesn't have a gun. It doesn't have 12 capacity like the Rhino, so you can't bring a character along either, but that's no issue in this army because there aren't really any worth taking. So pretty much just a 5-point cheaper Rhino. It's a metal box. It moves your troops around. doesn't even have a gun on it unless you take a pistol mounted one, which you're not going to. Really good option. The best thing about these, like Rhinos, is you can use them to interdict enemy movement. Once they've dropped their troops off, you can go and stick them in annoying places, force people to waste shots on them, block people from moving between tight gaps in ruins, you know, all sorts of different stuff. Block line of sight to your own troops or things with them. Super, super useful, these. Excellent option. And I would definitely consider putting at least one tear show in your armory, uh, in your army rather, in Auroxes in general. You know, if you're not going to run a lot of other arm armor at least, but even if you do, I would consider using some of these all the time just for the flexibility. Having some, you know, super cheap metal boxes to drive around the battlefield gives you, and I really like these and I'd certainly be, be using three or so of these in my armies so thinking about these tear shows then and their options i would i recommend running them well i think there is one you know main way to use these which is zero command sections and three rifle sections it maximizes your tear show reactions which is what you're after we don't want to take the command sections basically ever because they're just very poorly written within that three rifle sections though any unit sizes is viable really as they get bigger you're more efficient point spend per model more efficient use of points on the equipment more efficient use of your reactions but they become more vulnerable to blast and flames and things it's a reasonable trade-off large units certainly benefit the most from reborn cohort if you're going to use ultramar cohort which lets you take up to six rifle sections i would probably not take like six slots of 20 although that would be an insane reaction fire there's no way they will ever actually uh all be able to see the same target to react against it probably and uh like you know five flames would probably really ruin your day but you know you could use ultramar cohort to take like four to six units of 10 which would be a pretty good use you know get you get lots of men they get the plus one to hit um but you know you don't over overtake them but really i think whatever size you want to use 10 to 20 is completely fine within the units themselves always take that vox interlock upgrade and bring a hq or multiple hqs with command voxes in your army as well pretty much never a reason to not do that again we'll talk about hqs in the next episode as well no other upgrades is probably the optimal state most of them aren't worth their points although as i've said once you get past about 15 models augury scanners become worth it in, in some of your units or maybe all of them possibly the other good build for these i think is similar to the one above and all the same considerations apply except you put all three of them in aurox transports so ideally, if your opponent doesn't blow them up turn one, you move them forward, you got 30 men jump out, they're maybe on some objectives or in annoying places in the battlefield, then the transports are free to drive around and be annoying. I think if you're building any kind of force, that's a you know a good option to take. It's less than 300 points to take that unit as well, pretty good. They can get broken up by losing an early transport, and then you know your tertia won't be all in the same place unless the other men jump out of their transport as well. You can't take too many of these in your army as well, because with the sheer number of men in the army, plus all those Auroxes, you won't have a lot of place to go, particularly on a table with good terrain. But certainly I'd consider one of this build 
to go into your army as well to give you a bit of a different tactical option. And then finally, just to point out as well, you can take a single rifle section as a tertio as well. So you lose all the benefits of being in a tertio. The unit is a lot worse. If you want something that's just going to be an objective sitter or, you know, you want to like stick them next to a bunch of artillery just to prevent your opponent charging them with, you know, jump pack troops or something like that, you can take these in individual units. And because you pack so many men into a tertio and you've got so many troop slots in your army, it's easy to take some like battle tertios of three rifle sections and some just individual units of 10 who are going to be on, you know, guard duty or objective sitting duty or something as well. So do think about that as well. It's still an option. You don't really have to take more than one in the tertio. So in summary, rifle sections are excellent value and they are surprisingly flexible thanks to their strength six guns. Even though their profile isn't that attractive, getting 10 wounds for 60 points with a decent armor save that you still get against most weapons and strength six gun options is pretty good they're fairly resilient for their points because of you know the the effect of having 10 wounds and especially when you combine the high leadership potential from buffs these can all easily be leadership nine or ten or more with reborn cohorts your opponent actually has to kill them to get rid of them as well it's not like you can shoot a few and they break if you build your army properly and that is powerful in and of itself as well it's an interesting style of play using these guys differs significantly from other her heresy armies you know whether this is like an infantry focus list you're building with a lot of these or just as a component of a combined force you know you could have one like a couple of tear shows or you could have a thousand points worth of infantry and a thousand points worth of tanks however you use them it's a very different play style which is pretty cool i think some armies might feel a bit samey because you're effectively repeating the same unit with the same equipment over and over again although that is very solar auxilia or imperial guard in style it's just endless ranks of the same men so it makes a lot of thematic sense but you know it could be boring to play for some people might put you off running this army that you only have the one troop choice as well or without turning to other cohorts it is definitely a shame the command section doesn't do something one of the things i love about these armies is like the interplay of different units you know your voxers commanding different men and having the command section for the unit effectively play no part in that sort of chain of command possibly because of it's either just straight up bad writing or mistakes in play testing or maybe there's been some changes along the way and someone's not looked at the finished product and said why does this unit exist it's a real shame for what could have been some interesting army list building options and also the flavor of the army as well you know those five guys having some slightly different models with different equipment but they're just really poor on the table also as well the final thing to mention rifle sections do have a lot of competitive potential if you spam them you can fit hundreds of these guys in an army they are vulnerable to blast and flamers but because most armies are teched against space marines predominantly not a lot of people bring a lot of flamers and a lot of armies will bring like you know one or two whirlwind scorpius even at a competitive level which still isn't enough to go through 300 bodies on the board in the course of an, a normal game so spamming a lot of these is certainly a competitive uh build obviously there's more to it than just spamming these guys but they can be very powerful just because of the number of them that you can put on a board i don't think that's an army you will see most people will probably never even see it let alone play against it but it does have that potential and if you are a competitive player looking for an army that does something different to marines there is a build there to look at for sure and if you are going to uh, a tournament and you think you might be f facing something like this whatever the level of tournament do think about how your army is equipped to deal with masses of these guys you know I i'm a really big flamer fan even against space marines i think they're they're a really good weapon and if you do run into an army of these having flamers or lots of blast markers available is definitely a thing that can uh, help you out in that match as well so that's the end of the show thank you very much for listening i hope you've enjoyed it if you've got any feedback please do drop a comment below please do like and subscribe to the video as well and don't forget to join us on discord which is linked in the description below i'll see you all soon thanks and bye bye